All right, part three of grinding out these videos, let's go. Hey everyone, I'm Weez. Check out parts one and two of the series to get the full picture of my thoughts on Hunter x Hunter. Let's get straight into the short recap. Spoiler warning for this arc. After leaving Killua's home, Gon and Killua go to Heaven's Arena to earn some money and train to get better. The arena is built with a progression system that gives you harder opponents as you get to higher floors in the tower. Although they get through the lower levels easily, once they reach level 200, they face obstacles that they can only overcome with a special power called Nen. Hisoka is in the higher levels, killing time and contestants until he has to go to York New City to meet up with the rest of the Phantom Troop. Thankfully, a Nen teacher named Wing offers to to teach the boys, and they pick up the new techniques quickly. After a few fights with difficult opponents in level 200, Gon and Hisoka face off in an epic fight where despite losing, Gon delivers the punch to Hisoka that allows him to return the badge that Hisoka had given him. After that, they decide to go visit Mito, so they leave for Gon's old home on Whale Island. Okay, so there were a lot of cool fights in this arc. This is really the first time we get good old fashioned beat up your opponents kind of fights. But the added rules for being more of a combat sport gave an extra twist of complexity which is Hunter x Hunter's specialty, and the fights only get more complicated from here. I'm a big fan of how fights are done in this show. Similar to JoJo, they use a mix between realistic fast-paced action and very slow strategy. I have been in martial arts for over a decade, and this is a pretty good representation of what a real fight is like between two skilled fighters. There is a lot more strategy than people realize. Obviously, it's an exaggeration, but I'll take it over, I powered up during this fight and now I win. I'm not going to break down everything from each fight, so I just want wanted to mention my appreciation for it here. So the other thing I should talk about before we get into details is Nen. Similar to One Piece, and probably a lot of other shonen that I haven't seen, the magical power system is not shown until later into the story. However, it is foreshadowed, and you even see Nen, and Haki for One Piece, used before you are introduced to it. Overall, Nen is really cool. It's extremely complex, and it took me a while to wrap my mind around how it worked. But the power involves finding out what kind of thing you are good at, and then using your energy to create a power and amplify your attributes. There is four main techniques that Nen is based off of that affect your aura. Ten is like a shield that gives you an adrenaline boost. Zetsu hides your aura so you won't be detected by other Nen users. Ren is the aggressive version of Ten that you have seen used by Hisoka. It's usually shown as a character's bloodlust. Finally, there's Hatsu, which is how you use your special abilities. Nen is so complicated that I'm not going to go into any more detail unless it really matters to the story. There's a million techniques that branch off of the main four, but mostly you just need to know that you make an aura that helps defend and attack, and you can get super weird powers. I didn't get it at first, but after a while I understood the basics of how it worked, especially in later arcs where they tell you even more about it. Alright, we've got some new characters. Zushi, who I don't really like, but I do feel bad for. He introduces Gon and Killua to Nen and his master Wing, who trains them. He quickly gets passed in skill by the very special boys, even though he had been training for much longer. We also have Wing, who gave me kind of a bad vibe at first. I felt like he might be some kind of secret antagonist, but he was actually just there to teach Gon and Killua about Nen, as it is the true final test in the Hunter exam. I like having a teacher that isn't the stereotypical wise old mentor. They could have easily made Chairman Netero their teacher, but Hunter x Hunter respects its world too much to give them someone so important in the world as their teacher. I appreciate that the main characters are still just people in this world, and even if they are impressive, they aren't the most important or some kind of chosen ones that get extra special treatment. But Wing is fine, I like he isn't stereotypical, and he's a little messy, but I don't really love his character. We also have Machi, who is the first real member of the Phantom Troop we have met. She uses her ability to heal Hisoka after his fight with Castro, who is another new character that doesn't survive this arc. She reminds Hisoka to meet the troop in York New before leaving. She is a cool character, just used to build suspense for the next arc. There is a lot of mystery still around the Phantom Troop, but we are slowly learning how they work. Then there is the three hacks who become the main antagonist force until the final match with Hisoka. They were fine, I liked their design, and you get to see some of the wacky abilities Nen users use. Overall, they were nothing great. This arc was mostly fighting and training. Most of the runtime was explaining Nen and going through the fights. Usually I go chronologically, but I'm going to jump around to all the big things for this arc because they aren't so connected that you need context. First, learning Nen is the final test for truly becoming a hunter. Because of the power of Nen, it is kept as a secret from the general public, so they don't mention it during the hunter exam. It seemed a little too easy for Gon to already be a pro hunter, and he still seems pretty weak, so learning that there was a little more to it was a good reveal for me. 
Hisoka was amazing as always. When he blocks Gon and Killua from entering the 200th floor, he was actually protecting them from getting killed by the Nen users. With Hisoka's insane goals and overall crazy nature, he both helps and becomes an antagonist to the main characters. But it never feels like plot convenience because Hisoka doesn't want them to die before he can kill them when they are a real challenge. But Gon and Killua aren't the only plans the Jester has. Hisoka has a spider tattoo of the Phantom Troop, but it's quickly shown that it is a fake. However, unlike an earlier character in the Hunter exam, he did more than put on a fake tattoo, as Machi does tell him to meet up with the rest of the troop. Hisoka's fight against Castro is an underrated fight in Hunter x Hunter that shows what high-level Nen fighting is like, seeing the crazy abilities, having to figure out what your opponent is doing, and figuring out how to counter. It's a great fight because we get to see Hisoka losing until he figures out what Castro is doing. Once he realizes he has a doppelganger ability, you quickly see who is overall the better fighter as Hisoka quickly kills him. I can't finish talking about Hisoka without talking about bungee gum. It has the properties of both rubber and gum. I really love this power. It's weird enough that it fits Hisoka, but it isn't overly complicated. Hisoka uses it so well that it is extremely powerful as well. Hisoka versus Gon is the last Hisoka moment I have to talk about, but I'll get into that in a minute. The next thing we have is the three guys who want easy wins against the newbies coming into the 200th floor. It makes sense. But then they go and threaten Zushi, unless they forfeit the fights, giving them more victory so they can challenge a floor master. You need 10 fight wins to challenge a floor master, and then you get your own floor and a penthouse. Because of the hostage situation, Killua promises to give up during his fights, and they release Zushi back to him. This makes Killua really mad, and he has his next freaking epic moment. While Sao decides so, the one who threatened Zushi is in his room, Killua appears with a knife above his head, warning him to never appear before them again. Then Sao Deso concedes because of fear and calls his friends to warn them how dangerous Killua is. Godo and Rivalet don't seem to be scared by him, until they realize Killua is in the same room. He asks them to fight by the rules and they agree. Dang, Killua is amazing. I liked seeing Gon use his fishing rod. I thought it would be his main fighting tool, and using Nen, it could become a unique and powerful weapon. After floor 200, they allow weapons, but Gon only uses his fishing rod once, and goes back to his hand-to-hand -hand style, which was kind of disappointing to me. I liked seeing some of the callbacks of his first victory of catching the fish that let him go on this big adventure in the first place. Then we have Heaven's Arena itself. I like the whole vibe and system in place, fighting to get more difficult fighters, and going further up the tower. It's very linear progression that's fun to see. Reaching the highest levels makes you one of the best fighters. Maybe it's just nostalgia from making me remember the fighting arena from Knights of the Old Republic. Anyway, Heaven's Arena scoring system is interesting. It seems killing isn't punished if it seems to be an accident, but knocking an opponent out or scoring 10 points wins the match. They try their best to keep the fights from being deathmatches, with the judges fudging the score system if they think one opponent will kill another. You score a point from getting a clean hit, and two points from a critical hit. This is decided by a judge, which is which. If a fighter hits the ground, the opponent is also awarded a point. With all that said, we are on to the climax of this fight, the battle between Gon and Hisoka. Part of how Hunter x Hunter subverts expectation, while still having fantastic payoffs, is by stretching plot lines throughout arcs. Because Hisoka gave Gon his tag in the middle of the Hunter exam, Exam. You have multiple times where Gon could deliver the punch, but it holds off until the end of Heaven's Arena to give the satisfaction. I have to mention all the fights in Heaven's Arena were extremely well animated, and Gon vs. Hisoka was the peak of it. The strength of the attacks, the use of music and sound effects, mixed with the high action and fast paced animation made it so fantastic. The best shows, especially in shonen style, allow the hero to lose. It not only shows you you need to struggle and work hard to achieve your goals, you also have to lose too, but sometimes you might lose the fight, but also achieve your goals. Gon is defeated in the fight by a technical KO, but he realizes his potential. Hisoka is leagues above Gon in skill and talent, but Gon is still able to get the clean punch that he needed and return Hisoka's badge. All around, this fight did not disappoint in stakes, power scaling, which I will get into a later video, most power scaling is pretty stupid, but it is needed for a story like this. Animation or satisfaction. Gone also used strategy, which was very refreshing. I don't really have any more overall thoughts for this arc. I liked it, had some really great moments, but overall it still wasn't up to the level that this show has been hyped up to be. 
Let's get into favorites. Favorite character for this arc was Hisoka by far, followed by Gon actually. He was really great this arc. Then Killua, who I still want to put above Gon, they're both so good in this arc, but Gon's final fight with Hisoka puts him ahead. After that, there's not much to choose from. I would actually put Castro above Wing, and then I guess Godo? He was my favorite of the three very unlikable characters. So yeah, weird list for this arc. Hisoka at number one, then Gon, Killua, Castro, and Wing. <laughs> Yikes, not a great list. The best moment and my favorite moment was Gon versus Ahsoka, obviously. But Killua flexing after Zushi was threatened deserves mention as second best. Overall favorite characters, we have Hisoka jumping up to number one, followed by Killua, Leorio, Karapika, and Gon. I would have kept Leorio and Karapika at number one and two, but Hisoka and Killua just keep getting better. However, I am excited to see Leorio and Karapika again in the next arc. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and click the bell for notifications. The next video is on the York New City arc and I am so freaking excited to cover it. Don't miss it. I just want views. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment or suggestion or questions or critiques about the video and I will reply because I don't have that many people watching. That's all for me. If you liked this, check out the videos and the end cards. Jam meow.